Hey, I love therapy, and in fact, I've been going to therapy since I was around six years old. Though I talk about therapy a lot and may interview some therapists on the show on occasion, nothing that is said in this podcast should be considered a replacement for therapy. If you are struggling, I urge you to please seek guidance from a therapist because you are absolutely worth it. relationships, sex, and self-love. I am your host, Rachel Dalton. I hope everybody is doing well. I hope you are taking care of yourself as we enter into the summer season. Uh, I myself have been feeling a, I don't know, not a breath of fresh air sounds kind of disingenuous, but I found this new drive, I guess, in these different areas of my life. I know that you know, in the past couple of episodes, I've talked about uh, how I've been struggling with imposter syndrome, and it's still an uphill battle, but uh, at work, I am starting to feel a lot more driven and like I can do this. Um, you know, I've told myself this story since I was young that I'm not good at math. I'm not a math person. And uh, I'm realizing how detrimental that has been to my learning because I was pretty good at most things in school without trying very hard. Um, And math was one of those things that I had to try for. And uh, I didn't want to try. And so I told myself the story that I wasn't good at it, Um, which has not served me well. (laughs) So, uh, you know, I'm in this job that's, it's not totally math centric, but it's important to to, um, understand how math works and understand the numbers and that type of thing. And here's the thing, I can do it. And when I actually focus on it and focus on learning and not my brain shutting down, I'm actually pretty good at it. Um, And that's what's so funny is that I I have these voices myself telling me that I'm not good at it. Uh, But when I really, really dedicate myself, I am. And it's taken me a really long time to fight through that and to understand that. Um, and it's still a thing every day, uh, and it's a struggle, but I'm getting there and I'm starting to feel a lot more confident, uh, at work and, and just realizing that, you know, as somebody who has perfectionist tendencies, I'm not going to be good at everything right away and not being good at things right away makes me uncomfortable, but that doesn't mean that I'm bad at things. And, uh, hopefully this is a lesson that, all you listeners can take with you and apply somewhere to your in your life because uh, at age 33, it's been really important for me to learn. Um, a pretty major housekeeping thing. I mean, I say major as though it's going to be like something catastrophic that I have to announce. It's not. We have a new email. So uh, since the inception of this podcast, uh, any questions, comments have been emailed to winedine at allportsopen.com. Uh, new email is winedine69pod at gmail.com. Uh, so any questions that you have, any ideas for topics, any personal stories, send them on over there because that's where you're going to be able to find me. I'm going to see if I can link the emails um, temporarily so I can get any stragglers that may be over at the old one. But from this point forward, winedine69pod at gmail.com. Before I get into the episode today, which is about finding your value, I kind of very last minute, haphazardly, (laughs) yesterday, uh, created a document that I'm going to share and put in the episode notes. Um, I, you know, I, I went through a a breakup about almost, almost two years ago now. And, um, it, I mean, since I'm still talking about it, obviously it impacted me a lot. Right. Um, but I have gleaned a lot of really important information from my healing process, a lot of resources, and I'm still kind of active on the, um, breakup subreddit, just responding to people's comments because, um, I find that for whatever reason, the way that I say things resonates with people. Um, 
and people have asked me for some of the resources. I have a good friend who is recently going through a breakup situation um, and I was hanging out with him this week and was talking about some of these resources, some of these journal prompts that I went through and I was just like, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make a Google document. So, um, and I kind of decided that, hey, you know what, if I'm making this Google document, I could make it available to my listeners. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put that in the episode notes um, and I'll see if there's a way that I can kind of permanently link it on uh, my social media uh, so that you can find it whatever you need to. But yeah, I'm, I'm just calling it like a, a breakup healing toolkit. Um, so feel free to check that out and uh, I hope that there's something of value there for you, um, whether you are, you know, going through it now, whether you might go through it later, or you just have some healing to do. Uh, Speaking of value, my guest today is Latanza, and I am extremely excited to um, introduce her to you today. She is a value coach. She is a survivor of narcissistic abuse. Um, You know, we kind of talk about the fact that the word narcissist is thrown around a lot these days. Um, and it's important to know the signs of what a true narcissist looks like, not just, you know, somebody that we don't like. Um, and we cover that. We cover how to recover after you extricate yourself from that situation. We cover how to extricate yourself from that situation, um, chock full of really important knowledge. Uh, and so, you know, I knew that I was going to keep this this intro short today. Uh, I am extremely busy today running around doing lots of things. Um, but yeah, I hope that something in here, whether it's about imposter syndrome, whether it's about the breakup toolkit, or whether it's in this conversation that you're about to hear, I hope that it is helpful for you. Um, and I will be back in a couple of weeks. Uh, for the next episode. But in the meantime, please enjoy my conversation with Latanza. Calling all citizens of Halcyon City. The newest generation of heroes are now painting the pages of Delinquent Comics, an actual play podcast in the game world of Masks, a new generation. Join our heroes as they struggle to build a team and save the city. Can Titan escape the shadow of his mentor burnout? Is Soul's overwhelming power too dangerous to control? Will Muse discover her past? And how does White Knight stomach all those strange snacks? Listen to Delinquent Comics to find out at allportsopen.com, Spotify, iTunes, or wherever podcasts are found. New issues become available to all citizens every other Monday. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I am very pleased to introduce my guest for today, Latanza. Latanza, how are you doing? I am good, Rachel. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to talk to you. I mean, first, just... Your mission is one that is near and dear and close to my heart. Um, And let's kind of get started with that. Like, tell me a little bit about you and your story and how you kind of came to be involved in this work that you do. Okay. Well, my name is Latanza, and uh, presently I am a value coach. Um, And I help women um, that have been in or currently in uh, narcissistic and toxic relationships and How did I even get started in this? Well, I was in a narcissistic marriage. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about that um, later, but um, it was very hard. Uh, I went through a lot. It was traumatic. And the effects of a narcissist in the relationship leaves you in such a bad place and space. And so when I finally got out of it and I started healing from it, and got completely healed and made whole. Um, My whole mission now is to help other people not just come out of it, but to know their value and to be set free from it. Amazing. And I mean, I would hazard a guess that you kind of reestablishing and rediscovering your own value is, is what helped you through that process. Yes, yes. 
Great. Okay. So, um, I mean, do you want to tell me a little bit about like what happened in your life? And um, I mean, actually, you know what? Let's start with the basics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are the signs of a narcissistic relationship? What is a narcissistic relationship? Um, I think that this is a term that is used a lot in popular culture, you know, on TikTok and on Instagram. Um, but seeing as you are in the field, uh, I'm going to have you be the authority. Do you want to just give us a quick rundown of what that looks like? Yeah, um, yeah, narc- narcissistic, um, that is thrown a- around a lot. Um, I didn't know what it was at first um, until I became um, a part of a relationship with a narcissist. Um, a narcissist in the first part is, you know, I know from, um, <laughs> unfortunately, I know from uh, coming from it, um, when they first start with you, it's the love bombing stage. Uh, with a narcissist and that's right. the part where they woo you dine you um and within a matter of a couple of weeks or so they'll tell you they love you and so they this is all of a signs of a narcissist um and being in a relationship with one um after the that stage comes um the stage of i got her or i got him and you start going on an emotional roller coaster um, because with a narcissist, um, it's all about them. And mm-hmm. um, the effects of a narcissist, it can lead you into depression. Um, but the signs of a narcissist is, you know, the, the love bombing. And then they always talk about themselves. That's one thing a narcissist does. It's all about them. And if you even dare to talk about yourself or something relating to something else, they always want to try to bring it back to themselves because that's who they're all about. Right. It's almost like a a lack of an empathy or an understanding. Very very much so. They lack empathy. They, um, I can tell you for me, I remember one time uh, crying uh, about something that he had done, which I I would go into depth if you would like me to. Sure. um, Yeah. I just want to share with people. Whatever you are comfortable sharing. Okay. What it's like being with a narcissist. I met him um, in 2016. And when I met him, and this is a part that people need to get to, because a narcissist, they hunt, they're hunters, basically. Mm. And they hunt, hunt for people that um, are sympathetic and empathetic. Um, people that will cater to them and their needs, basically. And so when I met him, um, I had just lost um, my bonus grandbaby. Um, and oh. so the funeral was exactly the next day. Oh my gosh. And I so, am so sorry for your loss. Thank you. And so when, when I met him, I wasn't in a good uh, place at all. And so, um, I met him, they present themselves as the perfect person. And one mistake that I did do that I can tell other people not to do is to reveal too much too soon. Mm, um, because okay. a, a narcissist wants to know all about you because that's the pers- that's what they want to ultimately destroy. And they they try to get to know you so that they can pretend to be like you. And control and, you. Yeah, and control you. And so I, I told him a lot about me in that one night. Um, and he saw what I had. Um, because I had my own home, I own my own business. Um, I had my own cars, which one car he really loved. (laughs) Um, You know, so when he saw that car, which was a sports car, he really wanted that car. And so um, it was all love after that. And so after after that part came, um, I started seeing things with him. And that's another thing with being a, with a narcissist, do not ignore the signs. Hmm. I was ignoring the signs because I was thinking, okay, well, maybe he's going to get better. He was telling yeah. me, I'm going to, I'm not going to do it again. Um, and so the women, I started getting text messages. Um, oh gosh. I started seeing um, messages on his phone and, um, I just, I started experiencing things I've never experienced before. And this was before I married him. And um, so um, I told him, I can't marry you. And he told me, this is, he told me, you have to marry me. 
And I was like, well, are you going to stop? And he said, yes, I'm going to stop. And I knew, I didn't know at that point in time, but that car meant so much to him. Huh. And he did not want to lose the car, not me, the car. Incredibly so, materialistic. Yeah. They, a narcissist is materialistic. It's all about them and how they're looking because he will always say, how do I look? Hmm. And it's all about how they look. It's it's how they present to the outside world because it, people on the outside do not know what you're going through. And it's that's why it's so hard for them to believe the, the stories that you tell them because the narcissist presents themselves as a different person on the outside. And so after I married him, things were okay for a little while. I married him in 2017. So it was a short courtship, six months. Um, and so I married him and things went to hell. Um, by 2018, I didn't look like myself. Oh gosh. Um, my, uh, my eyes started bulging, um, underneath. I've never looked like that. It started getting really dark circles from lack of sleep, um, from things that he was doing. Um, he was staying up all night, um, looking for women um, he would, you know, just do crazy things. And, and that's when I started finding out about him actually being with women. We hadn't even been married a whole year. And he was actively cheating. He was actively cheating. Um, and if I, if you present something to a narcissist that they're doing, that's a no, no for no, no. And there, I got punished so many times for doing that. I got punished for asking him, why were you with her? Why did you take her to Dallas with you? It was a female all the way in Michigan that inboxed me. And she said, I think you need to know what your husband is doing. I mean, good for her. As a, yeah. as a Michigander, um, right. like I'm proud of her. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I think I'm, I'm thankful for her because she didn't give mm-hmm. in to him. Um, and he, he even told her, I'm going to tell her, don't tell her. But are you going to leave me? Now, he just started talking to this woman in, in one week and was asking her not to leave him because he told her he wanted to marry her. And that really just hurt me so bad. But of course, he denied it. Um, he gave an excuse for that. Um, he told me something horrible happened to him. And that's why um, he did these things and he was going to stop. It An was, entire lack of accountability. They do not hold accountability at all. A mm-hmm. narcissist will not take accountability or responsibility for their actions, but instead they will try to make you look like you're the one that's doing what they're doing. And, and I couldn't wrap my mind around it. I'm like, how could he do that? And so I started losing weight. I was on five different medications. I had never been on medication in my life. I was on five different medications for wow. my heart, uh, for my nerves. Um, it was so many things going on in my body. And that's another thing, the effects of being with a narcissist, is you go through so much, the, the emotion roller coaster, um, the mental, because it plays on your mental. It really does, because the lies and the manipulation, it plays on you. And so I was on five different medications and... I was losing myself. I was practically losing myself. Um, My eyesight started getting affected by it because of the stress. Um, It was so much going on in my body until my sister got so concerned because she said, Latanza, you don't look like yourself at all. You look like you're walking dead. Oh, gosh. And that's what I look like. And so I remember crying. One day I was on the bed crying and he came in the room and it was after I found out about another female and he looked at me and smiled and left out the room. What the? Yeah. He looked at me and smiled. It was, it was so demonic what he, when he did that. And I had to realize that I I deserve better. That is evil. It was, he, he was very evil. I mean, the, the, Some of the things he did, nobody would believe it. And so I actually started keeping um, text messages. Good for you. I started recording him. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I've hard. heard people have to do that uh, have as to. a way to validate yourself because they gaslight you and make you the gas think that you're, oh you know, it's, crazy. They they try to make you think that you're crazy and make people think that you're the one that did it to them. Mm-hmm. Because um, another thing with a narcissist, they will play victim. And so when I met him, he was the victim of his exes. But I, I found out later that his exes were the victim of him. Mm-hmm. And I bet now he's the victim of you to whoever else's life yes, he's you um, know, trying to mess he, up. After he, well, well I'm going I'm to tell you this and I'm going to tell you what he did after he left. Okay. Um, so after all that happened, I can tell anybody, well, I'm going to get to um, what I call the four R's in a minute. Okay. But I, I, I want to tell you this, that anybody that has been in this situation are are currently in this situation you have to decide and i had to make a decision that i couldn't do it anymore because i knew one or two things was going to happen if i stayed in the relationship i was either going to die physically or i was going to die mentally Mm -hmm. and i knew i had to get out of it so i made a decision and i knew why he was still with me i knew why he was still here it had I, he never wanted to touch me. I, we have a queen size bed. I never knew when he was in the bed because he was scooted all the way over. It was the, it was the stupid car, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a car. Oh my God. And, um, he, his phone, that's another thing with him. His phone was his best friend. I mean, the phone went to the bathroom. The phone went with him. The phone, if, if he laid it down, it was, um, it was laid down face down. So I couldn't see who was calling Mm, or texting mm -hmm. him. Um, And so I made a decision and I knew it was going to be a hard thing for me, but I knew it was necessary for my freedom. And so I had already set everything up to sell the car. And I sold the car and he came home that day and I told him I had a new vehicle. And I told him, I said, I got this and I traded in the red car. He got ballistic. Mm. Ballistic. Now, mind you, the car is in, was in my name and I had it before he came. And so um, he left. He told all his relatives that I disrespected him. He but told, it was your car to begin with. It was my car and mm-hmm. he has been disrespecting me for five years. And he told them that I was a horrible person that um, he walked on eggshells with me that um, he couldn't do nothing because I always wanted him at home, even though he wasn't here. Um, And so he told his relatives all this. He came home later, packed all his stuff. He started knocking stuff off the wall. He started tearing up stuff in the house. Um, I recorded the whole thing. He told, he went after he left, he told his family, he did not say a thing to me that my family came over and was trying to jump him and all this stuff. My family came because of what he was doing to my house. And I recorded the whole thing of the, he called me everything but a child of God. And Mm -hmm. so um, after that happened, the gaslighting happened. That's a stage, of vengeance for them, um, where they tell everybody how horrible you are. Um, people were looking at me and turning their heads, his family. Um, they didn't want to speak to me. Um, they thought I did their nephew, cousin, brother wrong. In all actuality, he is the one that did me wrong. Right. He took everything that he had done to you, which is sick because it shows that he was aware of what he did to you. But he took everything that he did to you and he turned it to make it sound like it was what you did to him. He it's did. Sick. He did. And it's sick. And he um he he made so many lies up till it was it was horrible. And he even laughed about it. Um after, you know, knowing what and so I started recording every phone call that he made to me. Uh, after that and I kept every text message where he told me that he wanted to work it out and I was a good woman to him and he didn't want to lose me and so all of these text messages while at the same time the females that he was with while he was with me he was with them after he left Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and he never stopped 
to this day, he is still doing the same thing to other women. And you just have to realize that they're not going to change. They just change who they're with. Right. Right. They change who they with. Yeah. And I mean, it's part of me wants to ask the question, like, do you know what made him like this? But the fact of the matter is it doesn't really matter. You can spin yourself into webs, you know, trying to figure out why he is the way that he is or why he can't take accountability. But it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, he's evil. <laughs> like like, yeah. like and, you said, a, a lot of a lot of narcissists, it stems from childhood. Mm -hmm. And a not surprising. Yeah, and a narcissist has to have um, someone that feeds them um, as far as someone that, that is okay with their actions. And so his mom was okay. I of remember course. calling his mom one day um, and I, t I told her, you know, he was, oh my God, he could play cry. Mm -hmm. He would be on the phone with somebody as if he was crying, but no tears ever came. And after he got out the phone, he laughed about it. Um, he called his mom and told her that I was in his phone <laughs> and she wanted to talk to me and I told her I said well he's talking to other females and I never forget what she said she said stay out of his damn phone <laughs> I said in order for me to respect you I need to hang up the phone and not talk to you good for you you yeah. you you knew your boundary at that point and you said it yeah and so it's she, a hard thing to do he fed into it and he has a sister that um, feeds into it. She actually helps him with it. And so that kind of thing, as long as they have somebody in their corner, um, they're going to continue to do it. Um, and he has to have someone that is going to um, feed into it. He has, that's kind of like kryptonite um, for, for me. Uh, and that's his weapon as far as, you know, having somebody in his corner that's going to vouch for him. He told his coworkers um, that I, I disrespected him, that I was a horrible person. He told his boss. Um, and another thing with a narcissist, why you with them, they'll convince you that, you know, to do certain things for them. Um, I had a business. He was working um, a nine to five. Um, and so he started telling me all of a sudden that he wanted to own a business. And I was like, he said it had been a dream of his all of a sudden. <laughs> okay. Because, you know, they, they eventually want what you have and they want to, they don't, they want to take the light off of you and put it on them. And so I said, okay. Now, when I met him, I had no credit card debt. I had hardly any debt. Um, I had a nice amount saved. So I was good after I met him. I became over $10,000 in debt on credit cards, um, helping him with his business. I started his business for him. Um, I bought two trucks for him, all in my name. <laughs> I bought, bought the equipment that he needed. And no matter what I did for him, it only fueled his, his fire to, look, to make other women look at him. Um, especially on social media. He would post, I have a business um, on TikTok. Um, he got to the point where he can make, you know, do lives. And I never forget walking into a room where he was doing a live on TikTok. He was dressed all up, had his hat on, everything. And he turned the camera so they couldn't see me. Oh, even though like really it was yeah, basically your business and everything, you know, but... Right. Right. And wow. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's funny how they do it. And it's so um, sad. And people that go through this, my heart goes out to them. It's so many people that, re you know, reach out to me on a daily basis and tell me, you know, your videos save me. Your videos help me to leave because I don't want anybody to keep going through this because it's hell. It's hell. I've never, ever been in a relationship like this, ever. A normal relationship, you leave, you know, you, whatever. But this, it is, it's, it's horrible. And sometimes it's hard for somebody to leave because it's a stronghold. People don't understand it. It's, it's, it's more than just the outward. It's, it's like an inward stronghold oh, yeah. that mm -hmm. you have to break. 
And until you break that, they'll woo you to come back. And if you go back to them, it's going to be worse because they're going to punish you for even thinking about leaving them. Right. And I mean, this isn't to victim blame, but when you go back, they realize, oh, I can do that again and, and she won't leave. Right. And, you even, know, yeah. And, and that's what they do. Even with him, um, he would if I found out about a female, he would say, I'm, I'm just going gonna, gonna to leave. I'm just going to leave. And he would throw the keys at me or something. And I said, you know, I say, I'm sorry, please don't leave. And so I, I, you get to that point where you started believing that it's your fault. Right. And so I had to wake up from that. And he told me after he left, he said, I thought you were going to beg me to stay. Hmm. He, he Which is probably me. what he would have loved, right? He wanted me to beg him mm-hmm. to stay. He wanted me to. And when I didn't, that's when he started packing his stuff, cussing me out and everything. But I needed to start living. And a lot of people don't leave because of fear Mm -hmm. and fear of starting over. They fear that nobody else will want them. And they fear that somebody will do it to them again. A lot of people call it love. I, I call it loving someone that you thought they were. Yeah, because it's not real love. You're it's, you're loving a character that they put on. You're not. You love you love who you thought they were, mm-hmm. and they don't love you. They love what you can do for them. Right. Because once you stop doing that for them, and once you start calling them out on what they do, they're gonna um, they're gonna replace you every time. They will stay with you as long as you don't bother them. Right. Right. As soon as you become more, quote unquote, high maintenance. Yeah. You become a liability Mm -hmm. because now you're calling them out. Now you're Mm -hmm. telling everybody what they're doing. You know, you're you're showing them what they're doing and they don't want to see what they're doing. They just want to do it. Because I remember putting a girl's picture off of Facebook on the bed and I said, who is this? He said, I don't know. She had just called me. And told me she didn't know he was married. And that's why she went to Dallas with him. And she said, I'm sorry. And he had, he, he claimed he had no idea. He had no idea. Hmm. None. Convenient. And, yeah. Very, oh, it, they make everything about them and it's very convenient. And mm-hmm. so um, one thing that I tell people is about the four R's of healing. And I had to do this. And the first one is, um, to recognize. And when I say recognize, you have to recognize that you're ready to to do it. You're ready to begin the process of leaving them and your process of healing. And that's only something you can do. Somebody, everybody could tell me, Tanza, I don't, I don't want you to keep going through this. Tanza, you, you know, you need to get out of this. Anybody could have told me that, but I had to come within myself and make that decision for me. When, when I knew that I could, because it knocks the strength out of you. Oh, it yeah. makes you weak um, to the point I, I, I'd stay in my room in the dark room because he would stay up to like three and four o'clock in the morning just so he can come to bed with me. <sighs> so it, it was bad. It was bad. And I tell people the second thing is to release. It's a two part to that, to, of releasing. Because release doesn't just mean them walking out the door or you walking out the door. Because you can walk out the door or they can walk out the door and you still don't release them. Right. Mentally. You might have left physically, but mentally you're still a prisoner. Mm -hmm. Because I I can tell people, I can be honest with people. When he walked out that door, I didn't release him because he was still calling. He was still wooing, even though I knew he was with somebody else. And he would tell me, well, I still want you. And so it was like he was trying to keep me to keep doing things for him because he still needed me to run the business. He still needed. And once I said, no, I'm not doing this no more. And that's when he got mad and started really gaslighting me. Mm -hmm. So you have to release them mentally and physically. And you have to do something else that is so hard for people. Um, A lot of people it's hard to do because of the pain that they inflict. And that's forgive. 
release and forgive because a lot of times we'd be like, you know, I can't forgive him because look what they did to me because, you know, when he left, I was a, I have financial debt that I didn't deserve. That yeah. he said, he, he said, um, you're not getting any of my money. And the debt was on me because it was in my name. It wasn't right. his name. So right. he didn't care. He told me, I don't care about your credit. He said, that's your credit. I said, <laughs> okay, okay. So you have to forgive. I had to forgive him. I had to forgive them. I had to forgive the female after he left that called me. Um, her daughter actually called me and wanted to say something crazy to me. And she texted me. And she wrote on my Facebook page. It was all very immature. You can have him. You know, that that's your headache now. Yeah. That, it's that's a, her, her mistake to make. And so I had to forgive all of that. And there was one more person that I had to forgive. I had to forgive me. Mm, because yes. a lot of times we blame ourselves for something we never did. But I had to forgive myself because I told myself why did you ignore the signs why did you ignore the signs and and let this man in anyway and so I had to reflect on that I had to forgive myself because I was like why did I do that why did I ignore all the signs that were right in front of me when he was you know facetiming females and having sexual acts with them and I call him why did I ignore all these signs and he made an excuse for every last time I did. He said, all men do that. <laughs> I said, really? Not none that I knew. Yeah, I, not most of the men that I know. N not normal men. No. Not normal men. And after you do those two things, the next thing I tell people is to rejoice. Because some you I, I, depression, the unhappiness, all of that, is stemmed from that narcissist. It gets you into a dark place. And I tell people I was in a dark, it, it, it was like being in a dark tunnel, a dark hole that I did not know how to come out of. And one day I woke up and I saw myself out of that hole. I was dirty. I, it was like you, you got all this dirt on you, but you came out. Yeah. I came out and then I, I started rejoicing. And I tell people journaling, if you're having a hard time with your process, if you're having a hard time getting over him, if you're having a hard time forgiving, journal. I have so many journals. Journaling has been something that has been a therapeutic thing for me. It, it has helped me mentally. It has helped me emotionally. It has helped me to get out things that I needed to get out that maybe I couldn't say to somebody else journaling I can tell anybody to journal mm -hmm. and as I look back on my journals I see the days that I was really down I see the days that I started coming out and then I see the days that I was made whole so journaling through your process is so important because through your journey you start journaling the process and the different days and how you start growing out of what was trying to bury you in Absolutely. And, and you and and I tell people, find just one thing every day to be thankful for. Mm -hmm. If it's nothing but you woke up that morning, mm -hmm. just find something to be thankful for. You know, I thank you for the that I have sunlight because, you know, my house used to be so dark because of the darkness that surrounded me. And, and it started being dark in my house because I didn't turn lights on anymore. It, it just felt so dark and 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 just dreary in my house and after he left all the sickness that was in my body left too and that was amazing I used to go around with pain in my body in my lower abdominal area I walk, I had got used to the pain I got mm -hmm. used to it um, because it, it was unbearable at times but I got used to it and after he left it all left every symptom left Every pill I threw out because I didn't need them anymore. Wow. It's crazy how the, the your mental health really can ha take a physical toll on your body. It does. It does. It takes a toll on your body. 
I mean, I was, it was affecting me even in my memory. It was hard to remember things. It, 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 it's, it's crazy how it affects you, but mm-hmm. it does. And the last R is to reinvent. And that's part of that too, because you have to relearn some things and unlearn some things because the things that they tell you, you start believing it. It's, it's kind of like when somebody locks um, somebody up um, that they have captive and they play something over and over and over and over and over into a room and they start brainwashing them into believing something that's not really true. That's what you get with a narcissist. Right. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, I'm so sorry they went through that, but your, your story of resilience is so incredible. And I think that those four R's really are um, vital to that healing process because, you know, it's crazy that you go through that tunnel that you're talking about and then you're, you know, out of the relationship, but there's still so much work that needs to be done. Um, and so I, I think that those four R's really do encapsulate that, that process. And um, uh, suffice to say, you learned more about yourself and, and redefined yourself and found your values as a result of this process? Yes, yes. That's another thing because once they leave, you start finding out who you truly are and you start realizing your value. And what do I mean by realizing your value? It's an inward thing. Mm. It's, it's knowing that your worth It's knowing that, that you are priceless. And that's what I tell people that you're priceless and that you're worth far more than what they ever gave you. Because sometimes we don't think we're worth anything. Sometimes we don't, we think we don't deserve something because of what we went through or because of something we did, but your value far exceeds what they did to you. And, and so that's what I tell people that once you started regaining yourself, once I started regaining myself, my head started holding up high and I started knowing who I was mm-hmm. and I knew what I wasn't going to take anymore from nobody. Because Absolutely. I took something that I never took from anybody in my life and I will never do it again. Nobody is worth that. Yeah. Nobody. No, 100%. It's funny too, because I've spent a good chunk of the last year figuring out what my values are. Mm. And I think that's vital when it comes to determining what your value, like how you have that self-worth. Figuring out what you value and the kind of person that you want to be and the way that you want to live your life. I don't know. Like, is there a connection there, do you think? It is a connection. You You have to not only know who you are, but know where you know, what, what you want, what do you value? How, how are you seeing you as a valuable person? My, your values, you need to write down your values. What is it that you, that, that are your values? What is it that you're not going to allow? What is it that you are going to allow? I, you know, that's one thing that I've had to do. I've had to say, okay, this is who I am. This is what I'm not going to take. And this is who I'm not going to ever be again. So Those two things go side by side. You have to know your values and you have to know that you are valuable. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's it's an inward thing. You know, the value thing It's an inward thing. And then to have values, that's your outer. Right. That's such a good way of putting it, that knowing your value is an internal process. Having your values is externalizing. Right that inward. That's a really good way of, of thinking about it. You know, it's, it's funny. One of my values that I've determined is accountability, um, which is yeah. funny that, you know, that we're talking about. Uh, the opposite. <laughs> exactly. Right. But, um, you know, I've determined just from losing a very large number of people in my life over the last few years um, that accountability is a really, really big value for me. I want to lead my life with accountability and I want the people that are in my life to be accountable, you know, and if I say, hey, that hurt my feelings or this made me feel this way, that they're able to say, that was totally not my intention, but I'm so sorry, you know. Um, and it sounds like when you're dealing with a narcissist, I mean, it, it is, it doesn't just sound like it, but it is, you're never going to get that accountability ever. How do you come to terms with that? 
Well, I will tell someone this, that you need to not ask the question why. Mm -hmm. Because Mm -hmm. um, why, which um, I like to say it like this, what's holding you back? This is what what was holding you, the why, W-H-Y, was holding you. And it, it, it will hold you back because you will never get the question answered. Why did you do this? Yeah. And so you have to go on not one, one, wondering why, not wanting revenge, not wanting something bad to happen to them, because that will hurt you mentally, too. It will. Because it holds you in a bad place. Now, I never want to be like that narcissist. Did I, did I, was I at that place at one time? Yeah. Of course. Because it's, of it's the, only, you, you go through these emotions, you go through mm-hmm. anger, you go through hurt, you go through pain, you go through tears, you go through, you know, want to, want to ride up on them, you know? Yeah. You, you go through all of these emotions it's because those of stages of grief. Mm-hmm. Because I'm, you know, if with a narcissist, they, they write with another person. Why are you over here trying to heal from what they did to you? That's and true. You, they are not looking like, back. <laughs> they they don't even care. They over here with five other women. I'm sitting here alone trying to figure out what the heck I, just happened to me. And that says more about them than it says about you as an it individual does. and as a person. It does. Mm-hmm. The person the person that went through it is a person that heals from it. The person that did it to you is a person that will never heal, but they continue to do it to someone else. Yeah. It's true. And to go on with your life, you have to let them go completely with no contact. No contact. You you can't follow them on social media. You can't try to see who the next girl is and think that it's better with her. It was better with you than it was with with the Mm -hmm. for you. So you have to you have to remember this that you too were the next person. You too were that person that they told all these horrible things that the exes did. Now that's very true. About you. Mm-hmm. So you have to remember that because we we sometimes we kind of forget because now we're seeing them with somebody else and think, oh wow, you know, now they're doing so much better, and and they probably happy. No, they are using her too. Well, that's the thing. It was such a huge part of your life. It was such a traumatic chapter of your life, but. I mean, and it sucks to think of it this way, but it also is kind of helpful in a way. Yeah. It was a huge traumatic chapter in your life, but to them, you are simply a part of their toxic cycle. Right. And it means nothing to them. And you have to, it's hard to to even phantom that, that you mean nothing to them. Because right. Because you were only their supply. And when they can get supply from you, it's, it's like a drug, you know, if a, if a drug dealer, you can't get the supply, they'll go to another drug dealer. Right. I mean, incredible. I, I can't even, my brain just doesn't work that way, <laughs> no. you know, so it, it's crazy to me that there are people like that out in the world, but I know that there are, <laughs> and um, yeah. I, I hate that they are out there doing this to other people, but, um, well, tell me about, so you have a TV show called The Valuable You. Talk to me about that. What's what's the format of it? Um, what does that look like? And and where can people find it? Yes, um, the, it's called The Valuable You. It's on the Inspire You Network, um, which can be found on um, Roku. Uh, it can okay. be downloaded um, to your phone or device. Um, it's also on Apple TV. Um, oh, nice. So I'm excited about it. Um, um, it's on every Tuesday. Um, at 7 p.m. Central Time um, live. So I'm excited. And I talk about um, narcissism. I talk about your value. Um, And so it's all in line with that. And just it's just to help people to grow and to and to know that they're not alone and to just help them to come out of what they what they've been in. And um, sometimes I have guests on there. But um, I'm excited about it. And I've had more men now reaching out to me um, concerning narcissi- uh, narcissistic women. That's great. Women. Yes, because there um, are narcissistic women. I think we yeah. hear a lot about narcissistic men. But I also think that's because women are a little more open to talking about emotional experiences where I think um, – men, men don't want you to know that. <laughs> yeah, there, there might be some embarrassment or shame. Yeah, there. yeah. But I had one to reach out to me today. So um, I was actually able to talk to him. 
Have you um heard of uh Dr. Romani? Oh, what's her last name? Just the D. I think it's like Dervasila or something like that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Really incredible YouTube videos about the subject of of yeah, narcissism, yeah. and I'll I'll link some of her stuff in the episode notes for people who may yeah. not have heard of her. But really, it's I mean, a lot of what you're talking about sounds exactly in line with yeah with what she's talking about. Uh, well, any last? We're coming to the end of time here, but are there any last like pieces of advice that you have for somebody who is in a narcissistic relationship and maybe listening to this podcast episode has made them recognize the signs or somebody who is recently out but is struggling to heal or even just somebody who is struggling to see their value? I know that's a really big question, but yeah. take it away. Well, I will tell you first of all, you have to make a choice for yourself and don't be afraid. That's one thing that I can tell you too. Don't allow fear to keep you in something that is toxic and something is draining you. And, uh, you know, you have to make the choice that you're going to let go. And I know it's hard sometimes to let go, but you have to release and let go in order for you to finally live again. And if you're struggling with that, like I said, you can journal. Um, you can find somebody to talk to. Uh, a lot of people don't uh, believe in therapists or whatever, but that is a, a good way to do it also. And know that you're Absolutely. not alone. Just know that you're not alone. I'm here. You can reach me on social media. Um, you can reach me on my website, Value Coach Latanza. Reach out to me. I will be happy to talk to you. I'll be more than happy to talk to you because I don't want to see anybody else go through what I went through because it's horrible. Um, and sometimes you do feel alone. And so mm -hmm. the last thing I want to tell you to do is this. Believe in yourself. Know your value. Don't believe in the what someone has told you that you're not because they might have told you that you're not this and you're not that they might have made you feel like that you're, you're the worst person in the world but know your value get yourself back to where you used to be and when you say you can't live without this person you were living with without this person before you met them mm -hmm. and you're gonna live again 1000%. And I mean, the more that people know to look for the signs of narcissism and the more that people get out of these relationships when they see those signs, I mean, maybe it's a, excuse me, maybe it's like a pipe dream, but perhaps, you know, we can cut the supply off for these narcissists at like as soon as we can and they'll be left alone right. and maybe we'll be forced to reflect who knows that's a narcissist's worst worst nightmares to be exactly alone. well um we talked about where people can watch the valuable you and you did give your website valuecoachlatanza.com um where else can people find you do you have like uh instagram or facebook or tiktok anything like that yeah i have um on tiktok is inspiring coach um on instagram and um facebook value coach latanza so you can find me on any of those platforms. Um, I do go live sometimes and I do put my content on there. So you can find me on any of those platforms. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, uh, Latanza. I really appreciate, uh, I mean, you were so vulnerable today sharing your story. And I know that, I mean, that in and of itself is huge, but you also gave everybody a lot of tools to recognize the signs and um, practical steps for how to move forward. So I really appreciate from the bottom of my heart, you sharing um, your story and your expertise. Thank you so much, Rachel. And thank you, everyone, for listening today. You've been listening to Wine, Dine, and 69. I am your host, Rachel Dalton, and let's keep talking. Mm -hmm.